Good day. We worship on the second Sunday of Christmas. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have filled all the earth with the light of your incarnate word. By your grace, empower us to reflect your light in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The gospel comes to us from the first chapter of St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who are born not of blood or the will of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only son, who is close to the father's heart, who has made him known. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. O Christ. Christ, let us pray. Good and gracious God, as we continue to celebrate Christmas and a new year of 2021, may you continue to give us new beginnings with Christ as our light and living word of grace and truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So do you like beginnings or endings to songs? Beginnings or endings to stories? Do you like the plot and the character development? Or do you like that happy ending, which typically comes? I realize that I like beginnings. Sometimes I like beginnings better than I like the endings. Knowing the characters, of course, in a, in a drama or movie or story ramps us up to the end. One of my children's favorite Christmas movies is called The Polar Express. You guys know about The Polar Express. Tom Hanks, blah, blah, blah. Well, if you're not watching it within the first five or ten minutes, you're completely lost. You might as well shut off the TV set and go on to something else because it's so important to be there right there at the beginning to figure out what everything is going on, that it's Christmas and Santa Claus and all this other jazz. Oh, sure, with the endings, we all like the endings to, like, say, football games better than we like the beginnings. We don't know who the winner is going to be. We know the winner at the end, but we don't know who the winner is at the, end, at the beginning. And we all kind of like the ends of, of movies, including the Polar Express, to find out if there is a happy or, or sad ending. But when it comes to years on a calendar, I like beginnings rather than endings. I appreciate the fact that it's a, a new year, a blank canvas, shall we say, holding much possibility. 
But on second thought, maybe it has to more, more to do with the fact that last year has come to an end. And we all know 2020 has not been the best for anybody. We have these great thoughts. Hey, 2020, it's like vision, you know, clear vision. But by the time we got to March, it was more like, hey, let's get through this year as quickly as we can so we can find a vaccine and get on with 2021. Of course, also 2020, we always think about the, the sins and the, and the messes that we've created. And, but now they're part of history. And that history has come to an end, at least for 2020's sake. New beginnings are like that. The old is gone. The new has come. On Christmas Eve, I, talk about, I talked about surprises. You know, surprises to Mary and to Joseph and to the wise men and to the shepherds. All being very surprised at this, um, this, this baby Jesus coming as a manger, our God. And of course, some were surprised on Sunday uh, when, when we came into church and we saw that we still have all the decorations up including here at the, at the Kinney abode, the Christmas tree is still up and it's still got the lights and the ornaments and everything else like that. For many of us, our Christmas trees are packed up or sitting on the curb. In fact, I even threatened the congregation on Sunday, not really, just jokingly, that I was going to drive around to see if, if there, anybody had their Christmas tree out on the, out on the curb, but I'm never going to do that, of course. Of course, and in America and around the world, decorations are coming down. Of course, the, the credit cards is going sky high. And Christmas is, is fading away. It's, it's January after all. We already brought in the new year. But of course, in the church, we get one last view of Christmas today. The church season of Epiphany, which is the manifestation of the light, doesn't begin until next week. So technically, we still are in the church in the Christ, Christmas mode. But more than that, in the church, we are still reflecting on what, mean, on what it means that Jesus came into being into our lives one day, so many centuries ago. Of course, the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Luke tell the story of that first Christmas filled with all those details that we love to hear. The story of the manger and the young couple or the shepherds and the wise men. It is a story that we never tire of hearing. But when John wrote his Gospel, he has a whole different approach to Christmas. He begins his account of Christmas with three simple words, words that we know by from Genesis in the beginning. In other words, for John, Jesus didn't start at Christmas. Jesus has always been. In the beginning, before there were houses, before there were roads, even before there was a Bethlehem, Jesus was with God. In fact, he is, and he is the living word of God, and he helped create the world in the beginning before anything else ever existed. John tells us this order in order to teach us that Jesus not only was God, but is God. It is a concept so huge to our faith that our, sometimes our finite minds have difficulty grasping it. That Jesus was in heaven with his Father and the Holy Spirit, the Ruach. But he came down to earth in a form of a human, be a human being. He walked among his people. Though he was God, he subjected himself to things like hunger and thirst and exhaustion and even tears of grief. He was God, but he allowed, but he allowed himself to be insulted, and teased, and tormented. He walked on this earth for 33 years uh, that he himself had created, and yet most people never recognized him. That's what the Gospel of John says, that he was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. For you see, God was in the world, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own people, and his own people would not accept him. Most of the first century people had no clue what was happening. They thought, of course, Jesus was wiser than most. They admired his teaching, and they were astonished at his miracles. But they didn't know who he was. Some, of course, said Jesus was a troublemaker. Others said Jesus was a prophet. Few recognized him as God. But some did recognize him as God. And this is how John begins the, his gospel. He said, to all those who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. Mission accomplished. That's what Jesus came to do from the very beginning. That was his plan. He would come into the world and love people in the community of God. And all those who follow him, all those who believe in him, are no longer strangers or aliens to God. They are children of God. This 
family relationship of father and children, mother and children. It's a new year and a time for new beginnings, 2021. Some of us are beginning diets tomorrow or the next day. That's always the best day to start a diet, you know. It's either tomorrow or, or the next day. Other of us, others of us are starting school or starting a new job or project. Still others are beginning a more difficult chapter in their lives. You are starting life over as a, as, a, as a single person because of death or divorce. Or you are starting the new year as an unemployed person or a person with a life-threatening illness. But you th see, the thing is, through all of this, John reminds us this day that none of us start this new year alone. We don't start the new year alone. Not if we believe in Jesus Christ, because he promises to be with us every day in the coming year. In a darkened world, he brings light among the people who are destined to die. And all of us, of course, are destined to die. Jesus promises us life beyond the grave. In a world where the past often haunts us, 2020, for example, Jesus chooses to forgive the past and presents us with a future that is filled with blessings and grace. Moses brought the law. Jesus brought grace and truth. God chooses and God gives us a new beginning. Every day, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. And that is the promise that Jesus wants to give to you on this first week of January. It is his promise to forget all your sins and all your failures. It's God's promise to erase the record of the broken promises and shattered dreams. You see, God's logic is different than, than uh, our logic. Endings become beginnings. Let me repeat that again. Endings become beginnings. It's like seeing the end of the movie now and then having the character development later. We already know our, our destiny. We already know our path. But God gives us that ending first to realize the beginnings are a lot easier than it looks. You see, God's logos God's word, God's living word in Christ, it gives us a second chance, a, a blank canvas, a new beginning for all of us. And according to John, all you have to do is receive it as a gift, like we received gifts underneath the Christmas tree this, this last year. We, all we have to do is receive God through Christ to believe and receive it as a gift. That's all we have to do. A new beginning, a new beginning. A new beginning from a never ending, but always creating and loving God. So may we begin this new year with a bold confidence in this living world, living among us, dying for us, rising for us, and giving us new life. A blank slate for 2021. Let us journey on now in faith. Amen. Thanks be to God.
Thank you.